everybody, I'm Sean Royer, and I'm a talent development specialist here in Los Angeles, California. And what a talent development specialist is, is I'm kind of a teacher, kind of a consultant, and kind of a manager. I kind of have all three hats, and I work with people who are interested in careers in music and acting. And so today we're going to talk about You've Only Got One Song, Five Things You Can Do to Make Your Audition Memorable. So I've been going to CMTC for, I think this is going to be my fourth year, and um, I've seen thousands of auditions there, as well as thousands of auditions all across um, the world. And so these are a few tips that I think you can use if you're auditioning for a music um, spot in um, CMTC. So I hope you really enjoy it and find this very informational. All right, so the first thing you're going to do uh, when, you're, when you've decided that you're going to do an audition is you've got to pick the right song. Now, it seems pretty obvious, but you would, you can only imagine how many songs that we get when we see an audition that just aren't the, the right fit. And so here's a few things that you can um, do to make sure that your song is the right fit so you show yourself off in the, in the best way. The first one, does the song have meaning to you? If the song doesn't have meaning to you, then then why do it, right? Just don't pick songs that just because you heard on the radio and it sounded good, it, it just, it that's not a reason to pick a song. What meaning does it have to, have to you? What does it make you feel when you hear it? Does it make you happy? Does it make you sad? Does it make you excited? Does it, does the song make you want to tell the whole world what you have to say? And then, so, and then going on with that, you found a song that has meaning to you. Can you relate to the song? So, you know, if you are prepping a, uh, someone who's nine years old, you don't want to necessarily do a song about breaking up with your boyfriend because the nine-year-old can't relate to that, right? Or if you are genuinely a happy person and you're trying to sing a song about cuddling up in, in bed because you've been hurt so bad and you can't relate to it, then we're going to see that in your performance. So you really want to take your time and pick a song that when you say the words and you're singing the words, that you feel a connection to them and that you can relate to the experiences that are in the song. And once again, I kind of referred to this before as age appropriate. You know, um, you know, if, if you're 14, you're, you don't want to be dropping F-bombs, you know, in your song or talking about things that you can't relate to. And then also, if you're, you know, an older singer, you don't want to be singing about dolls or or, 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 you know, um, being cool in school because it's really not, a, not appropriate. And the last one is venue appropriate. I and mean, you gotta take account of who you're singing for. You know, are you singing for the general population? Are you singing for in an audience that's gonna have children and adults? Is it going to be all adults? Is it going to be um, an ethnic experience where you're singing to a, a group that has ethnic songs that they like? So you have to kind of think of, um, what the venue is and who's listening to the song, and then you choose accordingly. All right, so let's go on to step two. And step two is get a different recording of the song. All right, what does that mean? It's, it's okay to get a karaoke track and just sing to the karaoke track, but it's not ideal. So, uh, especially if it's a song that's sung over and over again, you know, you don't want to pick a song by Whitney Houston and sing it exactly like Whitney Houston so that you can be compared to Whitney Houston or Adele or Ariana Grande. You want to have a song and take it a different way and make it your own. So there, there are three ways that you can, you can do this. One is record a different instrumental. So, you know, ask a friend who plays the piano, the guitar, or a music producer to go ahead and um, go ahead and ask them if they can produce a song for you, you know, in a different way, in a different mood. If it's a slow song, make it up tempo. If it's a, it's if it's an up tempo song, make it slow. If it's um, a male song, make it a female song. So there are all these different ways that you can take a song that everyone's heard before and make it your own. And then also make, so make sure that the song has a beginning, middle, and an end. So you, it's kind of like when you're watching Idol or The Voice, the songs are shorter, but you there's definitely a beginning point 
and then it builds with a high point and then an end. So that's why, you know, EDM doesn't really work when you're having an audition, right? You want a song that doesn't go on and on and on. You want a song that tells a story and it builds up and then has an ending that makes the audience feel satisfied. And it, uh, so another thing is, um, don't choose a song that kind of fades out. You want a song that has a very strong end point where the audience knows to clap or the audience knows when you're done. And then pick a song that shows off your strong points. So if you're a belter, pick a strong that really emphasizes the, those big belt notes. If you're, so, if you're a person who has a much simpler, much more um, softer voice, pick a song that shows off that. Don't try to take a, don't try to use your audition or your one song to show people what you're not. Show people who you are. And that's, you can do that by emphasizing your strong points. All right, let's go on to number three. You've got to practice your song. And this, you would think that this goes without saying, but you know, I've been, I've been um, at conventions and, and auditions where people are learning their songs in the hallway. So you need to make sure that you practice your song and make sure that every note is correct. And what do I mean by that? So when you're practicing your song, go line by line or even word by word and make sure that each note is correct. Don't just skip by a, don't skip by a note and not, don't skip by a word or a note and not know exactly where it is. And this is a tedious process, but it's a necessary process because the notes are the building block of the, of the house, right? And so you don't wanna have a foundation that is not absolutely solid. And the way that's going to be solid is by no learning every note of your song and making sure that it's correct. The next thing is know the meaning of every word. And I could tell you, this is something that I catch people on all the time. You know, they're singing a song and then I'll stop them and go, what does that word mean? And they don't know. And it's, it's very hard to get across the meaning of the words of the song if you don't know what the words are. Or if you don't know what the places that they're discussing, you know, in the song are, you know, if it's talking about geography, you know, how, how does that special place change the meaning of the song? So get out your dictionary and, or, you know, go on Google and, and learn every word. So now that you have every word and every note correct, right? Then you can start going on and started looking at your styles and making, at your style and making sure that um, you have dynamics, louds and softs in the music so that you can give the audience a ride, right? So you have your beginning and your middle and your end going this way, and now you have your ups and your downs going this way to give the audience something to to listen to and, and uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? To listen to and be taken away for, for an experience. Okay, and then the last one, 50 times rules. Okay, this is kind of a funny thing that we talk about my students is, I don't want them to even come to me to work with a song unless they've sung it 50 times. And so there are four parts of learning and four stages of learning. And the first one, um, unconscious, unconscious unconsciousness is that you don't even know what you don't know, right? So you get a song, you don't know how to sing it and you don't know the words and you don't know the notes, right? And then there are four stages until you get to un, uh, unconscious, what's it? Unconscious consciousness where it's like when you're driving and you don't have to think about the small steps of driving anymore. You can just drive. You don't have to think, okay, now I got to turn the car on and now that I got to, you know, uh, make sure that there's no one to the left and no one's to the right and to the back. Those are things that you do automatically and that only gets done through repetition. And that's the same thing with your song. You have to have repetition to get to that state where you can perform, which is the unconscious consciousness where you can just do it, right? Okay, so the next one is rehearse the song. And rehearsal is very different than practice. Rehearsal is where you, you've know, you know your song, and you've done all your work, and now you're getting ready to learn just how to perform the song. 
So you get your rehearsal space. If you need a microphone, you get your microphone. If you're singing a cappella, you do an a cappella. If you're singing with a track, you get your track. And you just perform the song as if you rehearse the song as you as if you were performing the song for the judges or for the audience. And this includes how you're getting into in and out of your song. Are you walking on quickly? Are you walking on slowly? Are you taking a, a quick ex exit? Are you taking a slow exit? Um, you know, are you coming in with your head down and then looking up when the song starts? Are you going to look down when the song ends and then exit? These are all things that you need to consider when you're rehearsing the song. And then, of course, your hand motions. What are you going to do with your darn hands when you're singing, right? Are you going to keep them by your side, which I don't recommend? Um, are you going to use your words to, are you going to use your hands to convey the words? So that's a great thing to, to do. One of the tricks that I use, I'm just going to share this with you, is um, with my students, who my singing students, is that I make believe, we make believe that we are singing and signing at the same time. And even though they don't know how to sign, right, I make, we, we use our hands to like smile or smile or you or you. And then we, we do it ridiculously. Like every single word we make a sign. And then at the very end, we find the motions that we liked. And then we use those hand motions in our song. So for example, if the song has hit the road jack, and one of the times, you know, you go, hit the road jack, right? Which is kind of silly. But you might say, oh, you know what? I like when I went road. So maybe in your song now, you go, hit the road jack, or hit the road jack, right? Or hit the road. You know, so um, so use that time and make your hand motions congruent with what you're singing. And then also, lastly, is the positions of the stage. Are you going to stay in one st one spot, which we call position one? Because there are actually five positions on the stage. Are you going to move to different positions of the stage when you're singing? And that can even happen in a small space. I'm not talking about a big space, but there's if, even if you're in a very small space, there's still positions. There's still ways that you can turn to the judges or to the audience, even if you're in a small space. And so you have to decide when you're when you're performing, when you're rehearsing, how you're going to position yourself to get the maximum um, maximum interest in the song. So, for example, if you're singing a ballad, maybe you start from in the beginning and then you walk to the left side for the for the verse and then you stay there for the chorus and then for the bridge you walk across the stage and go to the right and then in the middle so these are all important things that you need to work on when you are rehearsing your sh rehearsing your song all right and last but not least number five is the performance so the first thing is have water two hours before and a lot of people think that if you drink water while you're singing or before you're singing that's good for you but it actually doesn't help. Water has to be done. So the way that the vocal cords are, are is that when you drink water, the epiglottis actually stops the water from getting to your vocal cords. So when you're drinking water, it's not really doing anything for your vocal cords. It's not making them any better. It's just going down the esophagus and into your stomach. So how do you get hydrated before a show? You drink water two hours before a lot of water two hours before so that your body has a ch chance to digest the water, bring it to your muscles and your cartilage and all of that so that you are hydrated before the show. So I'm not saying don't bring water with you, but I'm letting you know that unless you're drinking it two hours before, it's not really gonna help. Make sure you warm up. Make sure that you do some vocal exercises. Make sure you do some body exercises so your whole body is warm. And then rehearse, then rehearse the song two or three times. Go through the words, go through anything that um, you've been having problems with and just, and just um, you know, go over them. But don't, and then, and then drop, and then drop it. Don't try to over rehearse because you know what, in actuality, if you don't know it by now and you're getting ready to go on, you're probably not going to know it when you get, get in the, get in the room. So it's best to make sure that you're prepared way before you do your song, like days before you do your song, 
and then so when you get to the performance it's a warm-up it's a quick go over and you're ready to go this one don't be desperate you want to go into the room knowing that you've done your best knowing that you have no you have no power over what goes into the what goes on in the room and once you get in the room you, your power came with your preparation when you get into the room then the power is in the hands of the judges and the audience right and so you need to know that especially when you're going to um competitions and especially cftc i think is that every judge wants you to do your very best so don't go into the room feeling like oh my goodness if i don't get this it's i'm going to my life is going to be over if i don't get this i'm a bad singer if i don't get this you know um you know i might as well give up because Bringing that anxiety in the room doesn't help you. Bringing those negative thoughts and those negative ideas into the room doesn't help you. And the craziest thing about it is that the judges can tell. If you come in desperate, if you come in with anxiety, even if you have the biggest smile on your face, we, we know that there's something going on. And we might not know exactly what it is, we just know that something's not right. So. Just take your time and know that you're prepared and then go in and do what I think everyone should do is just enjoy enjoy the song. You know, we're so blessed to have these talents and these opportunities. And so when you get into the room or get in front of your audience, just enjoy the time that you have sharing all your preparation and your practice and your rehearsals and your thought and let the audience just enjoy it. And and I think that's the biggest key to success on whether or not you have a su successful audition is how much you can go into the room and enjoy what you've done. So, you know, it's, it's, like, with, it's like with anything, you, put, you get what you put into it. So it's just so important that you take the time and, and bake the most perfect cake that you can before you bring it to the judges and so just go ahead and take these tips and work on them and come in prepared not desperate and just enjoy the experience and and hopefully if you enjoy it usually if you enjoy it the judges of the audience are going to enjoy it too so that's it from me i hope that you enjoyed this uh short presentation of um some of the things that you could be doing when you only have one song and you've got to get your your fabulousness across all right